Hello everybody, uh, my name is Sven Vinke. I am the founder and creative director of Laren Studios. Laren Studios is the developer of the Divinity series, which includes games like Divine Divinity and Divinity 2, the Dragon Knight saga. About nine months ago, we announced Divinity Original Sin, our new PC RPG set in the Divinity universe and scheduled for a release this year in 2013. When we announced the game, the reactions received from RPG players everywhere were very positive and that was very motivating for us. So motivating, in fact, that we want to do more and that's why we decided to come to Kickstarter. Today I'd like to show you what our current development status is and why I personally think that this is going to be the best RPG that Larian has ever created. Divinity Original Sin is an isometric RPG that you can play in single player, but it also features drop-in, drop-out multiplayer. Hello. Hi David. Uh, this is David, he's the producer of Original Sin and we'll show you the game uh, together today. So the game has a uh, unique dialogue system, uh, the protagonists, they have to make decisions in the game and it allows the protagonists actually to disagree with one another. So if you're playing in multiplayer that means that Davian and I can disagree off screen but also on screen and then it has an entire system uh, which takes care of handling those disagreements and that turns out to be quite a lot of fun. Uh, let's have a look at a couple of examples. Hey, there's a talking shell here. Really? <laughs> yeah, really. And uh, apparently it wants us to throw it back into the ocean. So let's just... No, 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 you can sell it. I think you should sell it. But it says that if we do throw it back into the ocean, it'll reward us. No, you should sell it. We can probably get a lot of gold for it. Okay, so if you are in disagreement like this, uh, when you have to make a decision, the game checks a couple of stats for you, like intimidation and charming, and then calculates who wins the discussion. And in this case, Sven won. Divinity Original Sin is very inspired by the first Divinity game. Uh, that means that we've created a highly interactive game world filled with stuff that you can interact with. So if you encounter an item, uh, you can move it around, you can use it, you can destroy it. Uh, you can often combine it with another item. Uh, you can, if you explore well, discover plenty of secrets uh, with those items. But you have to be careful what you do because uh, if you touch the stuff that belongs to somebody, uh, they will react to it. Like, for instance, here, if I pick up the fish from this guy, he calls the guards. And these guards know me already because this is the second time that they catch me stealing something. So they say, well, first time you got a warning, this time you're going to have to pay a fine of 250 gold or you're going to go to jail. So uh, I don't want to pick a fight with the guards, so I'm going to pay uh, 250 gold here. Speaking of item interactions, you have your usual suspects like food, armor and weapons that you can use in your adventure. Uh, but I can also use this broom as a weapon and I can even equip this bucket as a helmet. And walking around here, oh yeah, I can also uh, carve up a pumpkin to make for a helmet. But apparently that shopkeeper was paying attention and she's now calling the guards. And my reputation in this village has become so low that they immediately throw me in jail. So David is now in jail, which is kind of cool. And there are several ways that I can jailbreak him as his partner. And there's also ways that he can escape himself. But for now we're going to leave him there because you'll have to figure out for yourselves how to get out. Divinity Original Sin is a party based RPG but that doesn't mean that your party always has to stick together. So you can walk around freely uh, without the other guy always following you around. And here I'm having some fun with uh, throwing barrels at a troll just to annoy him. He doesn't really mind. I can even shoot a barrel from a distance. And apparently there's some water inside the barrel. So that creates a water surface. And these surfaces, we've, we've got a couple of different ones. You can use them to your advantage um, in combat. So, for instance, a water surface, I can turn it. Oops, I can turn it into an ice surface. But um, I also caught the troll in it, and he now started combat. Yeah, yeah. So while he's in turn-based combat, I can just mind my own business and go questing and go talking to people or like here interact with some mushrooms and make myself a nice poisonous sword uh, but if I want I can join him in his particular combat situation or engage in my own combat situation so let's go and help him right I'll throw a fireball at the ice that turns it into water and now I'm going to electrify that surface of water with a lightning bolt and that stuns the troll and that's that so I just dropped out of multiplayer to show you something really special. We are going to ship the editor along with the game so that you can make your own 
single player and multiplayer RPG adventures. This is actually the tool set that we are using ourselves to create this game. And it's a very powerful tool set because it's based on the technology that we've been using for the last 10-15 years to create all our RPGs. This is Axel, one of our designers. He's going to show you uh, how we use the tool set. Hi, so obviously as you can see we always start with an empty level. The first thing you need to do is to shape your world. Uh, for that you will start by modeling your terrain to give it the shape that you determined when you did the level design. Uh, then you need to paint it with textures uh, such as grass or mud or sand. After this you fill it up with large items like buildings and smaller items for decoration. Now once you've got your world you still need to give it life. Uh, you'll have to create characters and uh, you can give them automated behaviors uh, such as walking from A to B or talking to each other. You can give them dialogues for when the player wants to interact with them and you can uh, script all sorts of story events that occur during the game. And after that you just need to test it basically. Obviously it's going to take a bit more time than that but that should give you a good idea of the process. And once you've finished creating your story you can publish it online and play it with your friends so that should be pretty fun. Alright so Bomber Skeleton, ooh and that Infernal and bang, we're being hit by fireball. What are we gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna make sure he doesn't hit us anymore and I'm gonna summon an ice elemental right in front of them and let him take care of that guy. So I hope he works as a decoy yeah. and he should, he pulls aggro, so that's okay. There, there's explosive barrels there in the distance. Well noted, so I'm gonna shoot a fire arrow at him. Excellent. And that was a chain reaction. Or Okay, so it looks like the ice elemental is indeed attracting all the aggro. So that's good, because if we would be peppered by all these guys, and there's really a lot of them, uh, we would have been dead on the spot, I think. I think actually, oh yeah, well, there He's you go. playing his role <laughs> while he died. Turned oh, into better, a nice one. Better him than us. So you've been oozed. Okay, my turn. I'm going to explode Bomberman there. Yeah, because our allies will run up to me. Yeah, okay. and then he'll Thank lose. You. Yeah, okay. And I'm going to stun lock them with uh, lightning. Yeah. Okay, so I just hit the surface and that electrified the entire thing and bang you've been shot at me too actually. We're on fire. We need something to against fire. Okay, I'm going to move out of the lava surface and I'm gonna make it rain. Mm -hmm. I should put out the fire, it's going to make the fire surfaces disappear and I'm planning on using my uh, ice and water skills and they are going to be amplified by the fact that it's raining. Yeah, and the fire will be decreased, which is a pity for me, but I think that yeah, you're in the right to do that. I got more fire spells. Yes, so sorry, but with my cunning plan, I'm going to freeze all these guys. In the meantime, I killed, uh, well, at least I hit a zombie, put him on fire, and I'm going to help you, I'm going to protect you against fire, uh, because <laughs> that's why I'm protecting you against fire, exactly. <laughs> okay, it was already raining. So I was already a bit in the clear. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use my um, ice breath. dragon yeah. winter breath skill on those guys. And normally it doesn't uh, it doesn't have a range that long, but thanks to the fact that it's raining, it does. And yeah. I froze three guys. An ice wall, perhaps. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay, an ice wall over those skeletons, and then they won't bug us anymore. All right. Well, we're doing pretty well, actually. No, no, not bad. Mm -hmm. So, what is the story of Original Sin about? It's about two characters and they are special because they can wield a power called the Source, which almost nobody else in the world can use, and the catch is that it's actually forbidden to do so. And when they are released onto the world, they find themselves in the middle of a big conflict, a giant war, and to be able to survive, they will have to learn how to use the source, they will have to learn how it will enable them to defeat their enemies, but they will also have to cope with the sins of their past, which are back to haunt them. So why did we decide to come to Kickstarter? Well, in one phrase, we want to increase the development budget of the game. You see, if you look at what we've created so far, you'll find a pretty good RPG. Actually, in my opinion, this is probably the best RPG we've ever created. However, there's these little things missing from the gameplay that if they were present, would make this RPG a really great RPG. Actually, there's quite a few things we would like to add. It's important to us that when you explore the game world, that there's a constant stream of interesting things for you to do. 
And to ensure that, we would like to increase the amount of quests that you will discover, the amount of decisions that you have to make, the amount of different enemies with different AI behaviors and different abilities that you're going to encounter, the amount of skills that you can learn yourself, as well as the amount of loot that you will be able to find, or in general, just increase the amount of things that are present uh, within the game system. On top of that, there's a whole bunch of things that were suggested to us by our fans on our forum pages or on our Facebook pages or even via mail or sometimes just by coming to tell us. And uh, among those things, there's quite a lot of interesting ideas. So if we get a chance of implementing those, we'd be very happy to do so. And there's actually even more on our list. Now, our idea is not to delay the release of the game but to increase our current development capacity and add on top of what we're making already. And if ever there were a Larian RPG that deserved a budget increase, this is the one.